Hello and welcome to today's video where we will be reviewing the English 1 second semester exam review. You are taking the first step into making sure that you successfully complete the course by preparing beforehand. So before we get started, make sure you take notes on today's video and of course you can use it on your exam. There is also a video guide that accompanies the video that you can use as we're going along to answer any questions. And at any time, you can pause, rewind, or stop the video to review any material as needed. So we are going to be reviewing the following objectives. Part 1 is going to be an explanation of the Segment 2 exam and the format. Part 2 is grammar. Part 3 is paraphrase and summary. Part 4 is the elements of an argument. Part 5 is point of view and tone. Part 6 is context clues and vocabulary. So here we go with part 1, our exam facts. So for the segment 2 exam, when you go to take the exam, make sure you are using Internet Explorer, Safari, or Firefox for your web browser. Other ones have been known to show technical issues, and we want to make sure you do not have any issues. It is best to use an actual computer and not a smartphone or tablet when you take the exam. The exam is not timed. You have plenty of time to take it, but you do have to complete the exam all at once. Um, make sure you set aside about one and a half hours to give you plenty of time so you are not rushed through your exam. And note, you can only attempt your exam one time. So once you start it, make sure you are completely prepared to finish. Don't skip any questions on the exam. Make sure you answer everything. If you do fail the exam, you will be contacted by your instructor. You must score a 60% or higher to pass your current semester of the course. Please make sure that you're prepared and take your exam study guide and a dictionary with you as you are completing. So note, there is two versions of the segment two exam. There is a regular version and an honors version. Honors students, you will be responsible for the material on the regular portion of the exam, which we are covering. So the segment two exam has approximately 16 multiple choice questions with one short answer. In honor students, there is an honor segment two exam review video for more specific information on what you'll be covering. But honor students, you will have the same material as the regular plus the addition of your honors assignments. And an important test taking tip, have a dictionary with you. There will be several passages you're going to be reading where there will be unfamiliar words and the dictionary will be your best friend. So it's best to have like an, a second computer, a phone, or an actual physical dictionary to use. Now looking at part two, grammar. Parallel structure. Parallel structure is a sentence that expresses more than one idea in a single sentence. All ideas in the sentence have the same importance and parallel structure makes your writing and thoughts easier to understand. So looking at this example in red, how would you create or correct the sentence to make the correct parallel structure? Mary likes football to swim and going hiking. This is currently incorrect and we need to fix the sentence to make sure all the ideas have the same importance. So you can pause your video for a moment and note your answer. And to correct our parallel structure, we would write Mary likes football, swimming, and hiking. By making this correction, we can see we give importance to all three activities. And here's an example of a multiple choice question from the exam. Which of these sentences lack parallel structure? So our word lack in red means which one does not have parallel structure. So looking at option A, Michael decided to go to USF after reviewing his options and thoughtfully considering. Option B, Michael thoughtfully considered, reviewed his options, and decided to go to USF. C, Michael reviewed his options, considering, thoughtfully, and decided to go to USF. And D, Michael wanted to go to USF, UCF, or FSU. So look back at our question. Our question is asking which of these sentences lack 
parallel structure. So there's going to be three correct answers and one wrong answer. And we are looking for the wrong answer. So take a moment and pick your choice. And the correct answer is C. C lacks parallel structure. This is the incorrect version of parallel structure. So this is a sample of what you will be seeing on your exam. Our next grammar review is a clause. A clause is a simple sentence and it has a subject and predicate. An independent clause is a simple sentence that is a loan. So looking at this example in black, example where it says, Mitchell owns a car, the car is a classic. How can we correctly join these clauses without changing the meaning of the sentence? So right now it, it is a clause, but it kind of sounds like a run on sentence when you say out loud. So how would you correct this? So to correct this clause, we have several ways of fixing it. We could add a conjunction, which in our example, Mitchell owns a car, comma, and the car is a classic. We could use a period and make two separate sentences. Mitchell owns a car, period, the car is a classic. Or we could use a semicolon. Mitchell owns a car, semicolon, the car is a classic. All three of these are correct answers, but pay special attention to the semicolon because you will see this specifically on your exam. But let's practice one more time with clauses. How would we correct these clauses without changing the meaning of the sentence? The party was canceled, period. We decided to go to the movies instead. How could we correct these? Again, as our previous example, we have several options of correcting it, but in this, we want to lean towards the semicolon. The party was canceled, semicolon. We decided to go to the movies instead. And on to part three, paraphrase and summary. So first of all, what is the difference between a paraphrase and a summary? A paraphrase is a rewording of something another author wrote. So for example, you are a lead player for your team and your coach just gave you the calls for the next play. You then go back to the huddle and explain the plays to the rest of your team. Congratulations, you just paraphrased, paraphrased the coach's words in your own words. So let's take a look of paraphrasing. This is an excerpt from Lincoln's Gettys Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. How could we paraphrase this paragraph? So remember, a paraphrase is rewording something another author wrote. So to put it in our own words, we could write something like four score and seven years ago translates to 87 years. This speech was written in 1863. He is referring to 1776 and the founding of our nation. And just again, a prayer phrase is a rewording of something another author wrote. You're not providing an extra explanation. And another example from the exam for paraphrase in summary is our multiple choice. So our question asks, which answer is a complete and correct summary of the introduction of Lincoln's so let's look at what a summary is. A summary is a breakdown of the important things that happened in a story. Think of it as a brief one to two sentence description of what the author wants you to remember. In a summary, you will describe the central ideas and events from the story. So for example, your friend missed the game. You tell your friend all the highlights so he or she gets an idea of what happens. Congratulations, you just summarized the game. So let's look again at our question. Which of our answers is the complete and correct summary of the introduction to Lincoln's speech? So take a moment and pause the video. Which of these answers gives us details of all the major events that were covered in the excerpt? The correct answer is B. B includes an explanation of the main points that were involved in, in translated. In part four, we are going to look at elements of an argument. An argument is the statement of the reasons why you believe something is right or wrong. Our two 
two support that we provide for our argument is a claim and a counterclaim. The claim is the starting point for any argument. The claim states your position and it lets others know what you are trying to prove. Your counterclaim is you can definitely cannot have an argument without the other side or the opposition. The counterclaim is the statement of the reasons people might not disagree with the claim. So now we are going to analyze an argument. On your exam, you will be giving a text excerpt and you will be asked to read it and provide an analyzation of an argument like what we are getting ready to do. We are going to look at Lincoln's Gettysburg Address and identify the argument that's associated with this. So beginning at but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our power to add or detract, which is to take away from. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. So looking at our argument, what is Lincoln claiming? Take a moment and pause the video and see if you can identify the claim. So in this excerpt, Lincoln is arguing that the people who remain living after the battle have a duty to carry forth the wounded soldiers and to protect the freedom of its citizens. And now let's look on what is the purpose or the theme or the main idea of Lincoln's argument. So the purpose or the theme of this argument is Lincoln is tending to use the sacrifice made by these soldiers to rally everybody to continue to fight for a unified country. So let's look again at claim and counterclaim. You will have a short answer response on your exam where you will be asked to write a claim and counterclaim as a thesis statement. So looking at this example, this claim is the school should adopt a no dress code policy for students, whereas the counterclaim is evidence shows a decline in bullying by enforcing a dress code. So use this claim and counterclaim to create a thesis statement for a strong argument paper. So just a reminder, a thesis statement is a one sentence statement in your introductory paragraph. It provides specific details and offers a meaningful interpretation that someone might disagree with. It provides the question you will be answering in your writing. So for example, William Wordsworth uses tone and syntax to express his relationship with nature. So now we are going to write one together. For a strong thesis statement, you must address both your claim and counterclaim. So for example here, this claim is soda should be banned because it is harmful to your health. Where the counterclaim is soda should not be banned because you should be able to decide what you drink. So looking at our examples, which of these sounds like the best thesis statement for our claim and counterclaim on soda? So A, based on research, Soda should be banned because it is harmful to your health. B, soda should be banned due to health risks, even though people should be able to decide what they drink. C, soda should not be banned because you should be able to decide what you drink. Or D, you should drink soda. So just remember, our thesis statement should combine our claim and counterclaim into one sentence. So take a moment and choose which is the correct answer. So our correct answer is B, because it includes both the claim and counterclaim for our thesis statement. Soda should be banned because it is harmful to your health. There is our claim. And the second part is even though people should be able to decide what they drink. And there we see our counterclaim. 
So here's another example for you to practice writing a thesis statement on your own. The claim, as we saw previously, is the school should adopt a no dress code policy for students. And the counterclaim, evidence shows a decline in bullying by enforcing a dress code. So go ahead and practice writing your thesis statement, combining both the claim and counterclaim into one sentence. For part five, we are going to look at point of view and tone. So for point of view, in speech, the point of view of a speech is how the speaker relates to his or her audience. In order for this to work effectively, you have to be familiar with who your audience is and what they will find interesting. So looking at these pictures, if you spoke to these people, would you speak to them all the same exact way? So let's look at some examples. Read this text from the speech. That we were highly resolved that these dead shall not be di have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. So our question is, which answer best describes Lincoln's point of view as presented in this excerpt? So note, the question is asking for the best answer. So there is a possibility there is going to be more than one correct answer, but we are looking for the best one. So option A, he believes they will have freedom. Option B, he believes the dead shall not die in vain. Option C, he believes there will be a new birth of freedom. Or D, he believes his words are meant to reach people throughout the country. So go ahead and note your answer, and just remember Lincoln is speaking directly to the people who are present, and this is from his point of view. So the correct or the best answer would be Lincoln believes his words are meant to reach people throughout the country. He is giving this speech to try to rally the country to come together. So this is the best description of his point of view. Our next simple question, which sentence below would be most appropriate for which audience and situation? Our example is, at the football game, the student section should be moved closer to the, the cheerleaders to cheer for the team. So which would be most appropriate as being involved with this? Would it be a group of classmates, a parent-teacher organization, the local school board, or school business partners? Who would be the audience that would be most appropriate and concerned about the student section at football games? The correct answer would be a group of classmates. The audience, which would be the classmates, would be most concerned about where they would be sitting at a football game. Another example of our audience, which sentence below would be least appropriate? So the student parking at the high school could be more organized and managed. So let's look at our examples. Would it be a group of classmates, a parent-teacher organization, county school board members, or school principals? Which of these people would be the least involved? The correct answer would be C, the county school board members, because they would not be directly involved with where students would be parking at the school. And now let's look at tone. The tone is the author's attitude toward the subject. You can also have a neutral tone where the author is unbiased towards the subject. In a tone, you would be using a formal tone and an informal tone, depending on your audience. So for our example question, which tone and style would be most appropriate for an audience of teachers and parents? So from our example, how would you speak to a group of teachers and parents? Example A, hey y'all, let's get this party started. B, in today's meeting, we'll we be discussing the relationship between the community and school faculty. C, we are going to be very successful this year. D, the principal has a very detailed list of accomplishments. Which of these would be the most appropriate to say to an audience of teachers and parents? The correct answer is B, in today's meeting, we will be discussing the relationship between the community and faculty. So here we see that the speaker knows their audience. They are discussing items that will be relevant to the community, which includes parents and the school faculty, which are teachers. 
So in this example, the tone and style are formal, and it mentions the topics that are appropriate to the audience. In part six, we are going to look at context clues and vocabulary. So here, we use context clues and details to determine the meanings of difficult readings. And here, we put it all together by using vocabulary, main idea, theme, key details, synonyms, and context clues. So our example from the exam is our Lincoln Gettysburg Address excerpt again. And what is the main benefit from referencing the founding of our nation in the speech? Is it A, to convince listeners that Lincoln studied history? B, to make the connection that the nation was founded in liberty and equality, and people are now fighting for those rights again? C, to take listeners back to another memorial moment, moment in the timeline of history? Or D, to give an example of someone who has faced hardships? So this goes back to our question again. What is the main benefit from referencing the founding of our nation? Why does Lincoln talk about that? So take a moment and pick your answer. So the main benefit of referencing it is B, to make the connection that the nation was founded in liberty and equality, and people are now fighting for those rights again. And now again, our question is, based on the context of this text, what would be the best synonym for the word consecrated? So to review, a synonym is a word having the same or nearly the same meaning as another word. So our examples, we are looking at the word consecrated from our excerpt from the Gettysburg Address at the top. Our excerpt is, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our power to add or detract. So we are looking at the best synonym for consecrated. We have A, blessed, B, polluted, C, desecrated, or D, profane. The correct answer would be A, blessed. This is the best synonym for the word consecrated. So congratulations, we have completed the segment two exam review and we have a couple of things to look at. To practice for your exam, you can go into your gradebook and view your pretest that was found in module 4.00b. You cannot take the pretest again, but you can view the questions uh, for extra practice. Also, you will want to look at any assignment in units 4, 5, and 6. A note make sure you take the correct exam. Honor students, you will only be taking the segment exam honors, which is found in your gradebook for S2.07. You will not be taking the regular exam for the class. Regular students, you will not be taking the honors exam and only the 6.14 segment two exam. So now you're ready for the exam. What do you do now? Make sure that you have submitted all of your assignments in segment two. That includes your collaboration. Study your exam review handout and any materials from second semester. Contact your instructor for your exam password. And now take the exam and you are going to do fantastic. So congratulations, you have completed your segment two exam review. Honor students, to see more particulars for the honors portion, please view the honors video. And if you have any more questions, please contact your instructor.